What is up everybody and welcome to the Ride and Daddy channel or welcome back. Either way, glad to have you. Today, we're talking about bleeding brakes. I'm gonna actually bleed, bleed. I'm gonna bleed the front and the rear of my 2020 Harley Davidson Loretta RS. It does happen to have ABS uh, in the front and rear. We're gonna talk about that. But first, let's roll the intro. We'll come back, we'll do it. All righty, so yes, ABS. So here's the thing before I start it, according to Harley and according, you know, to correct way to do it or whatever, your ABS module um, needs to be bled um, to have like a thorough brake bleed as well to get everything out of there. Your, there's a couple different ways you can do this. One, which is the way Harley obviously recommends, is to take it to Harley, have a Harley Tech uh, connect their module or whatever, and do it electronically. The second is to buy, I think it's from V-Twin Visionary or something like that, um, but there's a, a, a module that basically does it. I believe the Thunder Max, you can do it with the program as well, um, but you could, so you could do it at home. That's several hundred dollars. It's honestly just cheaper to take it to Harley unless you have like a couple buddies that you want to, you know, do it several times where it's going to take several times to recoup the cost, whatever, but it, it might just just be beneficial just to take it to Harley. Or the third, which is what I'm gonna do because I'm not super worried about it. I have a scheduled maintenance coming up in about probably four-ish months anyway, and I'm just gonna have them do the full, you know, there for peace of mind. Uh, the, the fourth or the third, whatever way I'm up to, is to just do it yourself and not uh, bleed the ABS specifically. Um, what you know there's pros and cons if you're not comfortable doing that by all means don't do it this is not me saying this is the definitive this is the only way to do it this is how i'm going to do it and hopefully i'll help somebody also if you don't have abs this will be a definitive this is how you do it open and shut super easy um, but yeah so other than that as far as abs or non abs what i'm going to do today is going to be the exact same as what you would do with a non abs uh, this bike specifically does have dual brakes which means we're going to bleed the first or the farthest away um, caliper, what kind of thing of name, the farthest away caliper first and then work our way closer. So my reservoir is on the right side of the bike, which means we're going to bleed the left caliper and then the right caliper. Uh, technically, because of the way the Harley um, module that splits it up, because of, of how it goes, it kind of doesn't really matter. So it's just kind of a peace of mind thing, um, you know, better safe than sorry, but it kind of technically also doesn't really matter on this, but we're going to do it like that anyway. So we're going to bleed the left side, then the right side, and then we're going to go to the back, and the back is obviously only a single uh, rotor, so we're going to do that. As far as brake fluid, what I'm using today is just kind of cheap. Um, I've had uh, Lucas in the past that I've used. Honestly, it's as long as you keep up with it, I don't really feel a need. You know, it's not like we're, we're using race bike um, or we're on race bikes and we're, you know, pushing them to the absolute limits, you know, as far as like on a racetrack kind of thing, even for aggressive riding, I don't think you're gonna have any issue, but I went ahead and bought uh, Prestone. Um, it's mine takes dot four, your reservoir will say whatever it takes, but I bought dot four, dot four synthetic, um, really just whatever you can get your hands on. I did this because it was cheap. Uh, I like Prestone. I've used them in the past for like uh, other stuff as, uh, for my car stuff as well. Um, so I just went ahead and used and used this and it's readily available at the store. So if I ever need to top off or switch whatever, I know I could just pick this up again instead of like the Lucas or the Motools or whatever, having a special order it. Um, I have covered the bike with a towel on this side at least because that's where we're gonna be working. Um, because brake fluid is super corrosive. So you don't want it to touch your paint. You don't want it to get on any, um, you know, finished surfaces or bike or whatever. That's why I have stuff taped off. I have a towel and everything. This is kind of, this, I don't need to show you how to do this. You basically just tape off or towel off and tape the spots that you think you might get on whatever. Um, and then the top, uh, your reservoir just has two screws. You remove the cap and I'll show you a picture of that now. I remove a cap and then the rubber kind of like a diaphragm. I'm gonna set those aside on a towel with the bottom of the diaphragm, the part that's gonna be interacting with your actual reservoir full of fluid. Um, you're gonna to wanna to set that aside to the right or I'm not sorry, not to the right. It's on the right of the picture, but you set that aside, bottom down, touching it. Because if you set it up, there's condensation that can build up on that, and it'll just be harder. Obviously, you, your goal is to have as little to no water as possible in your brake lines because that's going to screw with it. So set it down. That'll keep the condensation from building in that layer that's going to actually interact with that part of the uh, reservoir. Uh, as far as why you might want to do this, specifically for me, uh, I actually did a bar job, which we'll talk about in a future video. Um, but because of that, I replaced the brake line with a different size. And obviously, there's no fluid in the brake line, air or whatever. So that's why mine is like this. Um, it's completely empty. But with what I'm about to show you, uh, you could just use that to 
siphon out the top of the liquid that you have there a little bit or whatever. Um, so yeah, we're starting from empty, but if you're starting from full, it's gonna be the same exact concept with what we're gonna do today. Uh, I will say also that Harley recommends every two years to change it. Um, this is because brake fluid deteriorates over time. It, uh, I forgot the name for it, but it, it grabs water, right? So it, it's gonna take water in. Um, so you can buy one of those meters that shows what percentage of water you have or whatever. I don't need one of those. I was gonna flush it out anyway, so I didn't wanna spend the extra money. But if you get one of those, and if you're really anal about it and you wanna test it, you can. Just do it about every two years. However, I know guys, including myself in the past, unfortunately, um, that have run bikes that are way past the two-year mark for um, for brake fluid swaps, you know, uh, changes, and uh, no issues. But for maximum performance, you know, your best, you're supposed to do it about every two years, if not even, you know, more, depending on where your conditions are for your bike and your humidity level and everything. So for me, it's about a year and a half, which is why while I have the brake fluid out, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rear as well. Another thing to note, um, this is all they had, unfortunately, the big, big canister, which is way enough way more it's way overkill um, but once you open a brake fluid canister once you break the seal and everything this is basically the same concept as sitting in your bike so once it's open even though you have the plastic cap it's never going to be completely tight um, don't you don't i mean there's people that say don't use it ever after you open it the first time i would keep it for about six months and then toss it if you ever need to uh you know top off or swap out or something like that at least you have it but after six months it's going to start accumulating that water and everything it's basically the same timeline as your fluid in there so you can't open this today swap your fluid out with brand new fluid you know opened today and then leave this half used open canister even shut on your shelf in your garage or whatever uh, and then two years later swap it out and think this, this is brand new fluid it's not you're essentially swapping out for almost the same exact timeline of fluid so don't do that but new every time pretty much or again like myself i'm going to go six months and then keep it but i don't foresee me needing another one in six months but yeah that's it so there are two ways to do brake bleeding, and we'll talk about them when I get down to the calipers or whatever, but today what I specifically have is this. It's like a vacuum, I forget exactly what it's called, but I got mine on Amazon, a bunch of people have it. It's the same concept as the ones you buy at the store for like 40 bucks at an auto parts store with like the, it's like a pneumatic, like a hand pump or whatever. Those suck. Uh, I've had those in the past, those are absolute garbage. If you don't have an air compressor, go buy one. If you do have an air compressor, this is all you need. It's cheap, this is everything it came with. It didn't, I don't need anything else. The concept is basically you put your air hose uh, from like a regular air compressor, just that shoots air out, you don't need a vacuum or whatever. Put your air hose uh, on this end of it. It's got a, um, a handle to actuate the air. It pushes the air out this way through this little like kind of filter guard and it creates a vacuum in the canister. This is a very big canister. I use this to bleed all four of my brakes a considerable amount on my car and completely do a swap out of fluid. Uh, and then it has hooks on both, so very convenient to keep the hooks on. And then this side has this rubber piece. Um, you could use this to do anything. Like I talked about the reservoir, um, what I did before I did my uh, hose swap out for the brake hose, I just use this end with you know this to vacuum all that liquid out of there instead of it doesn't you know it doesn't need necessarily need to be on one of the nipples for your uh, your calipers it could be on you know anything like that it was just in a basic pool of water whatever all the liquid see I got a little bit um, all the liquid goes in here and then this unscrews dump it out I mean this is this is a no brainer if you're gonna ever do anything with brakes thirty bucks or whatever it was a hundred percent worth it it's a very good quality. It's perfect. So this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, it's easier to do this as one person. It does also have this little thing so you can just hook this up and you do need a decent air compressor because it is, I operate it at about 85, 90 PSI. Um, I think it's said, I can't remember what the direction said. I think it says like 80 to 100 you can use it for. So I figured right in the middle of it. Uh, but it goes through air kind of quick the longer you have it on there, especially if you're doing like a real full where you're gonna siphon like one to two reservoirs full um, of brake fluid so it does go through air pretty quick you need a decent sized air compressor i have not a pancake but what is it it's eight gallons uh and it keeps up perfectly fine with it so that's what we're gonna be using today and i would say if you have that or larger you are more than good but a pancake is gonna pancake air compressor is really gonna struggle to uh keep up with something like this all right so first step is gonna be to get your wrench and your uh whatever you're using to breathe the, bleed the brakes uh, if you have just a clear hose line you can do that as well and i'll briefly go over that method but again this method in my opinion is way better um so you'll need for in my case eight millimeters if i'm wrong i'm wrong but uh i believe it's eight for everything brake kind of typical because they did like a uniform across the board but eight out of sae and metric that's the thing that fits mine the best so you're gonna need your uh clear hose whatever you're using for that 
bring it over yonder. Ooh, bring it over here. Hopefully make sure, there we go. Um, so you'll remove the little rubber cover. Go ahead and get your, um, your wrench put on first. And it's, so it's a uh, decent where you can go right all the way and then also um, turn it, you know, left and right. Put your hose, nipple, whatever you're using on the top of that. Uh, and then if you go ahead and this is kind of a tip, if you loop this to where the fluid, when we turn it, it's gonna rotate or whatever, but if you have the hose going up from where you start, it's gonna make everything a little bit easier. And I'm gonna actually gonna go ahead and hold mine on my uh, crash bar with one of the little hooks to make it even easier. All right, so kind of a, almost a pro tip, if you will, um, for this, instead of taking that whole thing out or whatever, I puncture a decent sized hole on the bottom of it and just a little small air relief hole. That way it can trickle out slowly on that side and at the top because we're gonna have to keep filling up the brake reservoir um, as we're doing this. The trick is once you start to never let that get empty because then you're gonna have to restart the whole thing again. Um, while I pour, I just have this kind of on the collar the edge is uh, one of the shop towels, no dust or lint or whatever. And uh, as I'm pouring it, it, if anything were to drip, at least I have this right here and, and it could keep up. But if you pour it decent uh, and slow and pay attention to what you're doing, you shouldn't have any issues, especially with that two hole kind of thing on top. So what we are going to do is I'm gonna fill up the reservoir first, make sure it's nice and full. Then I'm gonna turn on the vacuum. I got the air compressor already hooked up and on. I'm gonna turn on, and by turn on, I mean squeeze the handle and lock it. Turn on the vacuum pump. Go ahead and release the bleeder valve, which is just unscrewing it, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, whatever, you know, counterclockwise. Unscrew that about a full turn, or about a half a turn-ish, maybe three quarters of a turn, and you're gonna see liquid start to come out through that hose. And the whole time, I'm gonna siphon about one to two-ish, I got a lot to spare in this container, so one to two-ish um, cycles of full brake reservoir fluid, and that should take care of getting it mostly through the line, and then we're gonna go on the other side and do it about one to two as well, just you know, better safe than sorry, overkill, but again, I got a ton of here, so I don't really mind. And then at the end, we're gonna go ahead and shut the bleeder valve off first, then we're going to release the vacuum, um, but as we're releasing the vacuum, we're gonna take the little hose um, part of it off first. Uh, we're gonna take that hose off first, that way the vacuum pressure will suck up anything and we won't have a bunch leak out as we're taking it off if we do the vacuum uh, first, you know, if we shut the vacuum off. So let's go ahead and do that. and the front is done. So the last step is gonna to be to obviously wipe all this off. Uh, if there's anything, you know, make sure your, your seal is gonna be correct when you put on your reservoir cover. Um, make sure the level is up to whatever your manual tells you your, your level is supposed to be correct with your uh, reservoir fluid. And wipe off that gasket that's your, you know, your top uh, reservoir cover. Put everything back the way it was, screw it down. 
clean up if you got anything anywhere and you're good to go. And then we're going to go ahead and do the rear in a second. But first I want to cover um, that, you know, kind of old school technique of doing it. If you don't have this, if you don't want to spend the 30 bucks, 40, whatever it is, again, very much worth it. But if you don't want to do any of that, uh, what you can do is, um, so make sure this is full again, get a, just a random hose and an, an empty can or whatever, just that size hose that fits on that. Um, like the nipple for the caliper bleeding your brake bleeding screw or bolt, whatever nipple, whatever you want to call it. Um, put that on there, uh, squeeze this a few times, get pressure up your brake lever. And this goes for the, the rear as well. Any kind of brake, um, squeeze it a few times, slowly, whatever, until you build pressure again, making sure there's fluid, keep it held after a few pumps, unlock that, uh, bleeder, um, for a second or two, close the bleeder, then release the brake. Um, you're gonna have to do that several times. Uh, it's kind of annoying with one person. The front on a motorcycle, it's not that bad, especially on the front because you're right here. You're you know definitely within arm's reach, but it's annoying. It takes a few minutes to get it all done per caliper. This method is super easy. It's a no-brainer. You don't have to worry about you know pumping in a few times, or whatever. This is this is a great method. It's awesome. Highly recommend this. So I'm gonna go ahead and top this off, put the reservoir cover back on, and I'll bring you guys over so we work on the rear together. All right, just like that, done. Did the front and the back. Again, the ABS thing, we talked about it. I write this in all my video descriptions, but I feel like this specifically, I really have to say it, I am not a mechanic, right? So if you feel like something I'm doing you wouldn't trust for your own bike, don't do it. If you're not comfortable with what you're doing, period, don't do it. I'm not a mechanic, right? I didn't go to MMI, I didn't go to Harley Tech School or whatever, I don't, you know, I'm just doing based off what I know, what I feel comfortable with, reading manuals, watching videos myself, uh, forum research, all of that kind of stuff, past experience with stuff. Again, I am not a mechanic. I'm not. So, do what you feel you need to do. If you don't wanna spend the money or time and you just wanna take it to Harley and shell out like 140 bucks for them to bleed it or whatever, both front and rear, just go for it, just do it. Do whatever you wanna do. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I'm very happy with it. Uh, I'm gonna go take it for a test ride. Uh, again, I'll post a picture up right now, the hand tools that you typically get at like Advanced Auto Parts, Pep Boys, O'Reilly's, whatever, they're like a hand vacuum of basically the same system that we did, Garbaggio garbage i use them for my car like like my actual normal four-wheel vehicle and they suck they don't build vacuum good you have to keep pumping it it's you're honestly if you're doing that or or uh like by normal hand like having somebody pump the brakes and do the bleeder valve like i showed you like the manual old school way just do the old school way because those suck so bad the everything leaks the little reservoir is super small it's not good for a brake bleed at all unless you have like one they're garbage don't waste time or money on them. and they're more expensive than what i just showed you most people i feel like that diy kind of stuff have their own air compressors or know somebody that has one this is a really quick job to do so even if you have to go borrow somebody's air compressor real quick just buy this Again, I'll post the link uh, from Amazon in the description, but I think Harbor Freight has their own um, Northern Tool. I think, you know, any kind of like normal kind of tool shop or whatever has them, but Amazon, you can't go wrong. Super easy and you can return it if you really need to, but I love this thing. I've used it for my car, uh, my bike twice now, whatever. It, it's just awesome. So yes, uh, obviously link is in the description for what I used for it and then get yourself an air compressor if you don't have one. Video is pretty much done. I got a smoker ready and warmed up for me to put some ribeyes on it. I gotta put them on, I gotta test ride the bike. I have to, right? I have to take it out for a quick test ride, make sure everything's good, get a little wind in my hair. Uh, but that's about it. So if you haven't heard or if you haven't seen or whatever, uh, me and Motos and Mullets, link to his channel in the description as every video pretty much recently. Um, we're taking a trip to the Tail of Dragon on July 5th through July, well, we're getting there the 5th and the 9th. We're riding the 6th through the 8th, uh, though there's days like the time we'll actually be riding, but we're going to be riding that whole Georgia, Tennessee, uh, North Carolina kind of triangle area where they all kind of mesh together, Tail of Dragon trip. So if you're going to be there or if you live local and you want to take a ride on the Tail of Dragon with us or you just want to, you know, 
say hey and whatever. I'll have stickers for sure. I'm talking motos and mullets into making some stickers, but it, he's lazy about it. So maybe you guys can convince him too, but uh, I'll definitely have stickers. So um, if you're going to be there, say hey, drop me a Instagram uh, DM. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you have to, but uh, yeah, uh, just send me a message. Let me know when you're going to be there or whatever. Ask me questions. I'll be more than happy to interact with you and, and shake your hand, take some pics. We'll go like, cheese, you know, no duck lips. Okay. But yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, super excited for that. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm trying to get everything completely done with the bike before we go, but that's about it guys. Uh, there's always a pl playlist link in the description of the bike build series. If you're curious, right before the Taylor Dragon, I will be having a video go up that talks about everything I have, kind of a, a yearly update done to the bike. So check that out. Make sure you are subscribed. Please like this video, comment about what you think. Do you have this? Have you bled your own brakes? Let me know. And watch one or both of the recommended videos at the end of this video. Uh, until the next time guys, ride safe, have fun. Dad out.